Tom. I'm Dan Harr with Music News Nashville. Good to see you, Dan. We're here with Tom Johnston, one of the original founding members of the Doobie Brothers. Welcome. Thank you. I want to uh, ask you, basically, starting in 1969, from what I've understood, you put together the band PUD, which then evolved into the Doobie Brothers after that. We are now 44 years into this. <laughs> <laughs> we won't dwell on that. <laughs> well, to paraphrase one of your songs, what is it that keeps you rocking down the highway? Uh, just everybody loves playing. You know, everybody really enjoys being on stage and, and interacting with the crowd. I think that's pretty much it. And the reason we've been in, able to do that is is uh, radio has been one of the big reasons. Radio has been great to us. Uh, the other is we always try to put on the absolute best show we possibly can, and. Um, that's I, I, I'm I'm proud of this band because this band has has gotten more professional as the years go on as you know as, as they go along. Um, not that we weren't thinking professionally or non-professionally in the old days, but I don't think we were thinking about it much at all. We were just playing. Yeah. But uh, everybody has really taken the time to uh, to step it up a couple of notches, practice you know, and and just try to better themselves and I think it, you know, it's really paid off, it really has. I think it makes the, the, the gig more fun, I think it's more fun for the people and uh, I think it's more fun for the guys on stage. In all the years you've been doing this, is there any one point that stands out in your mind as the highlight? <clears throat> the highlight. Well, I guess you'd have to define the word highlight. I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, you could say, well, wow, yeah, it was really cool playing in a football stadium for, you know, however many 40,000 screaming fans. But at the same time, you could you could look at another show that you've done a couple of years ago someplace uh, at a festival, let's say, or something, there's like 30,000 people and, or, or, or less, or 20,000, 15,000, whatever. I, where the crowd really was just there. I mean, you know, they were... Everything he did was going right. The crowd was like 100% involved and the cyclical thing that would get going with the crowd was really working. And... That to me is always the highlight. So, as an artist, then the intimacy of interaction with the crowd versus just blurring it out to a, a group is actually better for you. For me, yeah, and and um, I think it. I'm not going to speak for the band, but I think it kind of works that way for the whole band. When, when the crowds really rock and the band plays better, always. So, back in the mid '70s and early '80s, you took a few years off. Um, a lot of our younger viewers who are into the Doobie Brothers don't realize that you also put out a few solo albums from yeah, what I, I understand. Two. Two. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about those? Yeah, uh, the first one was in 79 um, and it was called Everything You've Heard Is True and I did it with Ted Templeman and uh, it did fairly well and uh, I followed that I went on tour on that album and um, um, I had a lot of fun making it. I really had a ball making it. The other one was called uh, uh, Still Feels Good, and it didn't do as well statistically, shall we say. But um, it was very different from everything you've heard is true. Yeah, they were, they were different musically. Um, but it was, fun. It, was a, it was a neat thing to do. You're kind of like the captain of your own ship, and, you're, and it was, I, I really enjoyed the experience. Are there times you look back and, and say, okay, I'm with the band, or I'm a solo artist. Uh, is there any one that you would prefer the road to take if you had to, to choose again, to say, I want to go solo for the rest? Or oh, I, I thought I was going to start all over again back then? Yeah. Oh, boy. You know, that's really a hard question to answer because you really have no idea what the outcome would have been. I, I am very proud of this band. I, I, I think this band has been uh, musically viable for a long time. And... Yeah. Um, Everybody in it is, is a great player, and, and I'm, I'm proud to be associated with it. I really enjoyed doing the solo thing. It was really a kick. Um, when we got back together, that was that was fun too. So it, to me, it's about enjoying what you do. I would, you know, I wouldn't say no. I wouldn't want to ever do another solo album. But as far as if I was to go back to when we first started, there's no way for me to know how that would have worked out. So the off the wall question is: When they make the movie about the history of the Doobie Brothers. What actor do you want to play you? <laughs> <laughs> Soupy Sale. No, I, uh, I have no idea. I've never even thought about that. That's probably something somebody else should answer. Somebody else should answer. Okay. Uh, 
What comes next for the Doobie Brothers? I mean, again, 44 years, you're on the road, you're still touring. Are we going to be seeing another new album? Are we going to be seeing new material? We're talking about that right now, and it, but it's it's not your standard studio set of songs that we've uh, written. It would be a uh, collaborative affair with other artists uh, doing songs that have already been around for a while. And uh, that's... You know, the ink isn't on the paper or anything, but it's being sought after as we go, as we sit here and speak now. And um, I'm waiting to see how that comes out. If that if that happens, it'll be very interesting. I've never done anything like that before, and that's brand new and anything like that. It should be fun. Are you still songwriting yourself as well? I write all the time, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, lately, it's been due to a whole lot of things. I've started a lot of songs, I haven't finished them. That's not a good thing. You should always finish a song once you start it. Yeah. But uh, I've also reached out to some other guys and written with some other people, and that's that's another direction I'm I'm looking at doing a lot more instead of just doing it all myself like I have for a long time. And uh, you can always grow. You can always learn from other people. Man. It's really yeah. interesting. You've done so much in your career, but I'm wondering, is there any one group or performer that you would love to be on the road with, either as a solo or with the Doobie Brothers, that you haven't been on the road with? You mean in the band itself? Uh, not in the band, but you know, as a co-headliner or touring, touring with. with. Yeah, touring with. Oh God. Oh boy. Um, hmm. I guess that w I guess that would also lead into a big menu. who would be your musical idol. I've had so many people that I've admired over the years. Um, they wouldn't necessarily be a good fit to tour with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because uh, a lot of them are, you know, not, and don't take this the wrong way, but I mean it on the same stage, because I'm kind of an R&B and blues oriented kind of guy, as well as rock. And uh, some of the acts that I grew up um, listening to, getting my uh, chops from, if you will, and, and trying to uh, emulate, wouldn't necessarily probably be a great management to do these. <laughs> but you know, I, I think it'd be a gas tour like somebody like Eric, uh, Eric Clapton, something like okay. that would be a kick. Uh, I think that might even actually kind of work. We've toured with the Amas, we've toured with, uh, you know, Dr. John would be a kick. I mean, there's a lot of people that would be a kick. It's just whether it would work or not musically, I, you never know. Well, we're going to close it here, and I wanted to thank you so much for sitting down with me and taking the time to talk about Dewey Brothers history as well as your own. We've been talking with Tom Johnston of the Doobie Brothers, and thank you so much. My pleasure. I thank appreciate you for having it. me, man. You're welcome.